Good morning guys, it's been a while since I've been out vlogging. I'm really happy to say that I'm starting to do that again. Today we are at Passers Park which is really far from my house. It took me an hour to get here. So even before I started filming, I'm already feeling very tired. That's because my bag is in the lighters and I had to walk quite a bit. Anyways, we are here so we are gonna go explore this place. Hopefully it's not too noisy as you can tell from the surroundings but today I wanted to talk a little bit about something that took me a while to realize. I think it's a good trajectory that I'm on that I finally uh, came to this conclusion which I'm about to share. I'm really glad that today is not a very hot day because I'm already sweating a lot. I feel like, yeah, I've been putting off vlogging because of tiny gripes. First of all, I really don't like wearing the mask. So every time I have to wear it, it's just a bit of a downer. And yeah, I think I was just sorting through a lot of personal things. So I didn't really have like the hit space <laughs> to come out and film. But as I shared in the previous videos, I think I managed to sort out a lot of the inner struggles that I had previously. So I'm in a much better place now and I'm able to film now without any distractions or lack of motivation. I think if anything, um, I have this, I don't know, this issue that I have to deal with each time. So I have this thing where every weekday I get really excited building up to the weekend. Then when it comes to the weekend, I just kind of want to sleep and stay in bed but I'm really glad that today I pushed myself and got out of the house. I actually started filming last week but the footage didn't turn out that great and I'll share about it in a different video but yeah I'm really glad that I'm out today really pushing myself to do these things. I really wish I had a tighter focal range but I don't know if you can see the crab in that little puddle. I'm in the mangrove right now so it's kind of interesting. This place is pretty peaceful, apart from the construction noise that's going in the background. <laughs> so I don't know if you've noticed, but I actually haven't done um, any handheld shooting in a long time. Ever since I switched out of the GH5, which is by far my favorite camera out of everything that I've owned so far, I just stopped doing handheld stuff because I haven't found a camera that does ibis that well yeah so it's a bit of a shame but i'm happy to say that i will be jumping ship to sony soon i'm just in the midst of selling all my gear in order to invest into that system i'm also proud to say that i won't be um, putting my hands in the honey pot in terms of taking off my savings which is great so in order to fund that i really have to sell like all that i have all that i don't use at the moment so i'm super excited for that Dude, I don't want to be bitten by one of these. I really wish this had more reach. I don't know if you can see the monitor lizard that's swimming in the water over there. I don't know if you can see much up there, but let's go have a look. They all had their humongous telephoto lenses and I really wish I could see what was on the LCD screen but I didn't take a peek. Anyways, we're gonna find um, a bench that we can go sit on. So it's really nice that I managed to find a table and bench set up. So we're gonna do a little bit of a chit chat and the reason for today's video. <sighs> okay, first of all, it's really hot. <laughs> this is my struggle whenever I'm in Singapore. Today I wanted to talk about where I'm at and um, where I would like this channel to head towards. So I'm really, really excited for it, honestly. 
I think it's gonna be a good push because it'll really force me <laughs> I'm sorry for the birds It's really gonna force me to um, go out and shoot more Thank you Yeah <laughs> So it actually really took me a long time to figure out what my passions are and what my passions aren't <laughs> And I think I'm coming to this place where I don't really want my passion to turn into work because that was something that happened when I was living in Sydney. So I was developing my skill sets working as a videographer in Sydney and I was also really wanting to start a YouTube channel then, which I did. But it didn't really take off nor was I in the hit space to do it because I was just so consumed by work. I was not having a good routine. I was basically working a lot throughout the day, a lot of editing, and even though I really loved it, I was slowly burning out because I wasn't really socializing much. I was pretty much a homebody and I was getting cabin fever of sorts. The apartment that I was living in, the windows could not be open, so I was basically stuck indoors, um, not having fresh air. And I think it really played on my mental state of mind back then. And within three years, I burnt out. And this was um, towards the end of 2019. So it was kind of timely that I was back in Singapore for a holiday. <laughs> and my life pretty much spiraled from there, <laughs> if you were watching the previous videos. But I think it spiraled for a good reason because it was not sustainable, the pace that I was going at, and also the lack of clarity and direction on where I really wanted my life to head towards. So as I started dabbling more, filming random videos over the course of this year, I realized more and more that my favorite videos were the ones where I go on adventures, I go and explore Singapore and sharing, but I didn't really like vlogging or documenting my sewing journey because it was super tedious. So whenever I am doing something, I don't like being distracted or having to multitask, which was the case because I was trying to concentrate on sewing a garment, but I was also really preoccupied with the whole gear setup and what sort of angles and shots that I wanted. So I think that was my least favorite kind of video. And when I tried shooting the lookbook as well, I don't know if it's because of the space constraint and the lack of aesthetics when it came to the background, but I found that process also really tedious because I had to change outfits so many times and um, working with one camera is not very ideal in that case because I was trying to go for different shots and angles and so it was a lot of back and forth. <laughs> so it's been really interesting playing around with um, different videos and trying to figure out what I like and what I don't. And it made me come to the conclusion that I really enjoy filmmaking and videography and I realize now that it's actually my passion. <laughs> and I think going through that season of burnout, I've come to a place where I really don't want this to become a job because I think I would hate for it um, to get to a place where I'm stressed about money and I can't be creative or I can't say the things that I want to say because of clash in brand agreements or whatnot. I think this is something that I've noticed with um, the platform YouTube, especially when people take it on as a brand. I guess some of the things that they give up is um, the flexibility of freedom to shoot whatever they want, especially if they've built an audience that um, is vibing with whatever theme <laughs> that they're going with. So I've seen it where some creators, for example, they are so heavily into tech reviews when they try to do an experiment something different, there's that fear of losing that audience that they've painstakingly put in the time and effort to build. So I don't want this channel to come to that place where I can't just film whatever I want to film. And I think as I thought about it more, I remember at the start of 2020 when I really wanted to jump in to YouTube, I just had this 
preconceived idea or, th or this dream of what the channel might look like. I guess being influenced by all the YouTubers that I've come across so far and seeing their success. There's definitely some element of glitz and glamour, even though there's so much hard work that goes behind the scenes. But as I thought about it more, I really don't want to come to that place where I'm trying to share a story, share a testimony, share about experiences in my life, and then suddenly drop a brand deal in the middle of the video. I don't know, like even I myself, when I watch YouTube videos, I understand that because it is a job for a lot of people, they do have to pay the bills and therefore the brand deals actually really help in supporting their work, supporting their channel and giving them a livelihood. So I totally respect that. But I think for me personally, I don't want the channel to sort of hit in that direction if it even takes off because I don't want it to come to a place where I have to compromise on my message or what I want to share because of um, the partnerships that might go on when it comes to video collaborations and brand deals. And also, I was just thinking that I don't think my content is for a lot of people <laughs> because there are going to be things that I'm going to say based on what I've been learning by listening to sermons and reading the Bible that is really going to offend people. But I'm coming from a place of love and because I'm experiencing so much freedom, I really desire that for other people, but not everyone's gonna want that or can see it the way that I see it because everyone's different. So I don't think putting my livelihood uh, on the line by trying to mesh that with my passion is the wisest thing. So with that, I feel that I will continue <laughs> separating this passion project of mine, which is YouTube and creating content from my everyday nine to five. And even though it's been difficult because I've had so many desires of wanting to do what I love full time, I also see that perhaps it is not for me um, to yeah, create films and make a living out of that. Yeah, I've realized that this process is really special and it's something I really enjoy, but I don't want to turn it into a money-making machine, if that makes sense, or at least try to make it go somewhere which it might not or should not go that way. So it's been really interesting just reflecting on what I've learned, where I've been and where I'm heading towards. And I'm really excited for all that this channel is going to be about and um, going to head towards. And what's really exciting as well is I actually got accepted um, at a uni to pursue textile design, which is super exciting. But I have decided, even though there's 5% of me that wants it to do it in 2022, I think I'm going to defer it to 2023, just seeing how the situation in Australia is really unsettled. But at least it's something that, to look forward to. Hopefully, we will get there. But seeing how my life hasn't really gone to plan, nor will it ever really go as planned, I'm just going to yeah, just have this in open arms and not stress out if it doesn't really work out because... Who knows what's going to happen in 2022, it's definitely uncertain for sure, but I just know that I want to be focusing on telling more stories, creating content that I really enjoy, and just continue to have this grow as a passion, but not have it become something that consumes me, um, whereby I'm putting all my eggs in this basket, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I could say the beaches in Singapore are nice but it's not. I don't think I've ever really found a nice beach apart from that secret beach video that I made. Even then, the sand is really coarse and it always smells really fishy. 
<laughs> which is really sad but I think it's still pretty cool though that we're at the beach which is a short walk from the mangrove that we were at earlier I'm happy to say that I used to be really afraid of vlogging in public because I didn't want people to think I was weird or like watch me vlog but these days I'm a lot more comfortable I think something that I always just think about is that these people are not going to remember my face <laughs> so it doesn't really matter and they always just look on with curiosity for a couple of seconds and then they kind of just walk away get on with their life yeah so I feel like that's a bit of accomplishment for me I don't know if you can see that little settlement that's on the water right out there. I think it's a Kelong, a little bit like a fish farm that's on stilts in the water. These shoes were just washed and now they're muddy again. It's so annoying. I'm honestly really grateful for where I've been, where I'm at, and where I might be headed. Although I'm not entirely sure like what the future holds because Things change really quickly and I don't really want to set a lot of plans because when those plans aren't met, that's when you get a lot of disappointment. <laughs> and that was something that I sort of had to navigate the past two years since moving back. So I don't really want to kind of put myself in that situation again, but I'm really excited for what's coming and I hope you guys are excited as well. I'm actually really looking forward to switching up the gear and I'm gonna make another video about that which will kind of talk a little bit about um, a challenge that I'm gonna give myself during this period of transition which I feel is gonna kill my pride a lot and um, it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle but I'm looking forward to that and I know that eventually when I jump into the Sony system I'm gonna be really excited and happy because I can finally do handheld shooting which was something that I really enjoyed and the footage that comes out of handheld shooting when it works is really fun and it's just really energizing which I feel has been missing in my videos which is why I haven't really done a lot of b-roll and stuff but I'm really looking forward to that so I hope you'll stay tuned as well so there's actually a maze garden here which is pretty cool and we are gonna check that out and then there's one more place that I would like to take you guys before heading home. Okay, we are gonna scratch those plants because I was walking and then this frog just jumped out of the bush Frogs are one of the um, creatures that I really don't like so I'm not going to put myself in that situation So that's the maze if you are wanting to go there but I want to caution you because you might come across toads that just jump out of the hedges I feel really gross right now <laughs> Yeah, I really don't like frogs Ew so the stable's actually there, but you can't enter unless you're authorized. This definitely brings me back to the times where my dad used to go horse riding and we would go to the stables and feed the horses with carrots and pet them and it was really really fun. So that was something I really remember and enjoyed from my childhood. I just wanted to share that um, you can actually do horse riding. This is the Gallup Stables in the Pasir Ris Park complex. There's also a cafe called the Gallup Bistro which is behind me. I saw that there are a lot of bikes out there so I think a lot of cyclists go there for breakfast which is nice. But anyways, this is the end of today's vlog. Thank you for joining me today. I can't wait to be filming more and sharing more of my journey with you guys. So definitely stay tuned for that and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Good morning! <laughs> Hello! Everyone, meet Bailey. <laughs> She's probably wondering what I'm doing. She's a really curious pup. <laughs> my sister got her recently. 
and she's been a great addition to the family.